It's wild to picture a world without a top predator, right? But just like every role in nature today, even apex predators had to start somewhere. There was a time long ago when that niche sat wide open, until evolution stepped in and some bizarre creature claimed the throne. Long before lions ruled the savannas or killer whales patrolled the seas, even before T-Rex stomped across ancient Earth or sharks cruised the oceans, and way before those massive prehistoric bugs took flight, the planet's very first top predator was something truly strange by modern standards. Its name? Anomalocarus, a creature so alien-looking, it'd be right at home in a sci-fi movie. Now, hidden high in the Canadian Rockies is one of the most important fossil sites on Earth, a prehistoric seafloor locked in stone. And while the setting might feel familiar, an underwater ecosystem buzzing with life, the animals that live there? Completely otherworldly. Usually, when paleontologists find fossils, they're looking at single organisms, just a snapshot in time. But thanks to some freak natural events, sometimes entire ancient communities get frozen in place. That's exactly what happened in this spot, known as the Burgess Shale. It's a treasure trove, a time capsule filled with the bizarre life forms of a long lost ocean. We're talking about a scene from 500 million years ago, during a chapter of Earth's story called the Cambrian Period. To put that into perspective, that's over twice as old as the oldest dinosaurs. Back then, the Earth's surface was like an alien planet. On land, pretty much nothing. No trees, no grass, no flowers, just maybe some moss or other super simple plants. But even that's up for debate because solid fossil proof of land plants doesn't show up until a bit later. The daylight was shorter too, just 21 hours long, and the oxygen in the air, totally unpredictable. One moment there might be plenty, and the next, barely enough to go around. It was a wild, unstable world. Back in the Cambrian period, most of the land on Earth was just empty real estate. Dry, lifeless, and barren. But beneath the waves? That's where things were really starting to heat up. For the first time in Earth's history, ocean ecosystems were beginning to look surprisingly complex. These early marine communities had animals that, while wildly different from anything we know, played similar roles to modern species. Still, their bodies were downright bizarre. Imagine a creature no bigger than a mouse, swimming around with five eyes on its head and a claw so strangely built, nothing alive today has anything like it. That was Opabinia. Then there was Hallucigenia, a spiny little critter with legs that ended in tiny claws, looking like it crawled straight out of a fever dream. Sure, prehistoric life has its fair share of oddballs, but what makes the Cambrian period stand out is just how consistently weird everything was. Nearly every creature from that time had some wild alien feature that's never been seen since. And what's more, we still don't really know how most of these animals are related to anything else, past or present. Their family trees? Still a mystery or hotly debated by scientists. There were only a couple of exceptions, creatures that we can confidently trace through the fossil record. Trilobites, for example, were like the cockroaches of the ancient sea. They didn't make it to the present day, but they hung around for hundreds of millions of years after the Cambrian. Then there's Pekaya, a tiny worm-like animal believed to be one of the earliest ancestors of fish. And eventually, us. Now, you might be wondering why everything was so strange back then. Well, it's a pattern we've seen before. Right after major extinction events, new and unusual species tend to pop up, racing to fill in the empty ecological roles. But just as fast as they appear, most of them disappear, outcompeted or unable to adapt. And in the Cambrian, complex multicellular life was still new to the game. So in a lot of ways, it probably felt like the aftermath of a global wipeout with evolution experimenting wildly. From the start, scientists noticed a theme with Cambrian creatures. They were tiny, often under four inches long, and many had built-in defenses like spines or armored plates. That got paleontologists thinking. If all these little guys were trying to defend themselves, there had to be something bigger out there. Something at the top of the food chain. Turns out they were right fossils of a large predator had been found as far back as the late 1800s, but they were so weird looking. Scientists thought they were pieces of completely different animals. It took decades before the full picture came together, and Anomalocaris was recognized for what it really was, the Cambrian Ocean's first apex predator, 
The first fossils of Anomalocaris weren't recognized for what they really were. One of the earliest pieces found was actually part of its mouth, but back then, scientists mistook it for the body of a shrimp. Another fossil from the same creature? Misidentified as a jellyfish. To make things even more confusing, these weird fossils kept showing up together, like clockwork. Over and over, two shrimp bodies with no heads would be found right next to what looked like a jellyfish. This repeated pairing puzzled researchers. Eventually, someone noticed that these so-called shrimp bodies didn't have a digestive system. No stomach, no guts, nothing. That tipped them off. These probably weren't bodies at all, but some sort of appendages. Still, scientists weren't quite there yet. The best guess at the time? Maybe they were legs or limbs from some unknown crustacean-like animal. But then came the breakthrough. While going through Cambrian fossil collections, researchers found a specimen where one of those odd appendages was clearly attached to the jellyfish, which, it turns out, wasn't a jellyfish at all. It was the mouth of a single, massive predator. That discovery finally connected the dots. All those mysterious parts belonged to one creature, Anomalocaris. It wasn't just any animal either. It was the largest and most fearsome predator of its time. Since then, we found much more complete fossils of Anomalocaris, and if anything, they've made it seem even stranger. This predator didn't swim like a fish or crawl like a crab. Instead, it glided through the water using rows of rippling flaps along its sides, steering with a big fan-shaped tail. When it closed in on prey, it grabbed them using two large, segmented appendages on its head, almost like arms, and crushed them using its circular, razor-lined mouth. In terms of size and predatory behavior, Anomalocaris holds the title as the earliest known apex predator in Earth's fossil record. Now, there are even older fossils out there, some from a time called the Ediacaran period. But those life forms were way more primitive and didn't behave anything like Cambrian animals. So far, we haven't found any clear evidence of large active predators from that earlier time. And here's the kicker. Animals like Anomalocaris weren't closely related to anything living today. They belonged to an ancient, now extinct group called the Radiodonta. This group, which included a few different species, all shared some funky traits, fan-shaped fins running along their bodies, and those iconic head appendages. Radiodonts are considered stem arthropods, that means they're early relatives of modern animals with exoskeletons like spiders, crabs, and insects. But they branched off way before those familiar groups evolved. In other words, they're like distant evolutionary cousins who showed up at the family reunion wearing armor and alien accessories. Even though radiodonts like Anomalocaris were arthropods, part of the same broad group as today's insects, crabs, and spiders, they split off from that evolutionary path super early. Their lineage dead-ended. They don't have any direct descendants still swimming around today. Now, when you think of modern ocean arthropods, most of them crawl around the seafloor. Think crabs, lobsters, and shrimp. Not exactly Olympic swimmers. But radiodonts were totally different. They were fast, free-swimming hunters that filled the kinds of roles we usually associate with fish or squid today. What's really fascinating is how Anomalocaris went from being a mystery to something we now know was pretty common. Once paleontologists finally figured out what they were looking at, fossils of Anomalocaris started showing up all over the place, from the ancient seafloors of Canada to Morocco and even Australia. That global spread tells us one thing loud and clear. These creatures were a major success story of their time. And in the Cambrian world, where most animals were tiny, Anomalocaris was a giant. It could grow up to 60 centimeters long, or about two feet. That might not sound huge by today's standards, but back then, being that size gave it a serious edge. It wasn't just big, it was advanced. Some exceptionally well-preserved fossils have revealed one of its secret weapons, eyes. And not just any eyes, these were compound eyes, made up of thousands of individual lenses, similar to what you'd find on modern insects or crustaceans. At first, scientists assumed its vision was like that of trilobites, which were some of the earliest animals to develop eyes. Trilobite eyes were made of calcite, a mineral that probably gave them decent sight, but with a kind of blurry low-res quality. But Anomalocaris? It had next-level vision for its time. 
Its eyes were more similar to what you'd find on an average modern-day insect, sharp, fast, and excellent at detecting movement. For a predator, that was a game-changer. From early on, researchers suspected that Anomalocaris preyed on hard-shelled animals crawling along the seafloor. Fossils of trilobites from the same time period show signs of attack, damaged shells and wounds that look like they came from a fast, powerful hunter. And Anomalocaris, being one of the few big mobile predators around, seemed like the perfect culprit. So it's no stretch to say that Anomalocaris ruled the Cambrian seas. With speed, size, and sharp vision on its side, it had all the tools to dominate a world still figuring out how to evolve. But recent research has flipped the script on what we thought about Anomalocaris. Turns out, it probably wasn't built to take down hard-shelled prey, like trilobites after all. Scientists now believe that trying to crush those armored animals would have likely damaged its own feeding appendages. So instead of cracking shells, it probably hunted much softer targets. Combine that with how perfectly streamlined its body was for swimming, and the picture becomes clearer. Anomalocaris was more likely a high-speed pursuit predator, chasing down soft-bodied animals in open water. Things like early protofish or jellyfish drifting through the Cambrian seas. This changes our view of early ecosystems. It suggests that life during the Cambrian was more sophisticated than we gave it credit for, with specialized predators and more layered food webs. And Anomalocaris wasn't the only player. After its time in the spotlight, its relatives, the radiodonts, spread into all sorts of roles. These radiodonts had a similar basic body plan. But when it came to their head appendages, the tools they used to hunt or feed, there was a ton of variety. That tells us they lived very different lifestyles. Take Hardia Victoria, for example. It was a smaller cousin that lived toward the end of the Cambrian, it didn't go after trilobites either. Its front limbs looked like they were designed for sifting through the seafloor, probably picking off tiny critters hiding in the sediment. Then there's Amplectoblua, a larger species that had claw-like appendages. They looked similar to crustacean claws, but here's the twist. They weren't related to crabs or lobsters at all. This was a case of convergent evolution, two different creatures ending up with similar tools just because they were useful not because they shared a common ancestor. For a long time, scientists thought the radiodonts all vanished at the end of the Cambrian. But in February 2014, that theory was upended when fossils from Morocco revealed a late surviving radiodont from the Ordovician period, about 480 million years ago. Its name? Aegirocassus. And Aegirocassus was a game changer. This radiodont wasn't a hunter, it was a filter feeder. Its limbs were equipped with five long lobes each lined with delicate spines that it likely used to strain plankton from the water, much like how today's baleen whales or manta rays feed. And like those modern filter feeders, Edgyrocassus was huge, especially for its time. It could reach lengths of nearly two meters, making it not only the largest known radiodont, but also the biggest animal of the early Ordovician. So, in a surprising evolutionary twist, these once-feared apex predators followed a path similar to sharks and whales, starting off as hunters and eventually evolving into gentle giants that fed on the smallest creatures in the ocean. Like most of the strange and fascinating creatures from the Cambrian era, Anomalocaris eventually disappeared. It went extinct, along with the rest of its radiodont relatives, and nothing quite like it has ever returned to Earth's oceans. Still. While the creature itself vanished, the role it played didn't. From that point forward, the torch of Apex Predator has been passed again and again, through fish, reptiles, mammals, and beyond. Nature always finds a way to fill that top spot on the food chain. Click on the video on your screen to keep exploring with us. There's always more to discover. We'll see you in the next one.